there. Good morning, everybody. 10 a.m. Wednesday. Couldn't remember the day there for a second. The 19th of August, 2020. We're in Genesis chapter 31 today. Things are coming to a head between Jacob and Laban, and we're going to see a parting of ways here this morning. It's a bit of a lengthy chapter, so let's pray and jump right in. Father, we love you, and we're thankful for your goodness to us yet again this morning. Beautiful morning it is out there, and we're grateful for your love and care for us. We pray this morning you give us wisdom and help us as we look to your word to glean some wisdom from it. Make application to our lives where it's needed, please, in Christ's name, amen. Very good. Chapter 31, book of Genesis, away we go. And he heard the words of Laban's sons, saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was our father's hath he gotten all this glory. So this story is continuing on. If you remember yesterday, Jacob devised this plan. First, he made an agreement with Laban that he would soon be departing and going his own way, but he wanted some payment for uh, his labors there and his work, and they decided that it would be in the form of livestock. And Jacob said, give me all the livestock that isn't solid in color. Give me the ones that are ring straight and striped and speckled and so forth, and uh, you keep all the solid. And so Jacob devised this plan using some stripped rods or limbs from trees, putting it in the watering trough. you got to read it in chapter 30. It's a bit complicated. And so the number of strong, healthy, spotted and speckled and striped livestock was far outnumbering the, the solid colors, which were also weak and anemic. And so Jacob is getting the better end of the deal here. And that's where this is picking up. And he heard the words of Laban's sons. So Laban's sons are complaining that Jacob's livestock is better and healthier and more numerous. Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's. They're accusing him of doing something dirty here. And of that which was our father's hath he gotten all his glory. He's saying Jacob wouldn't even have anything if it weren't for Laban. Our dad is the one who's provided everything for him. And to be fair, when Jacob showed up at Laban's house 14 years ago, now it's it's later, it's more like 20 years ago, we'll see. And uh, he had nothing, right? But he's labored and worked for 20 years, so a little bit disingenuous. Verse 2, And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban. A countenance is someone's expression, their face, the way they carry themselves. And behold, it was not toward him as before. So Laban used to love uh, Jacob, and he used to be excited about Jacob, and they used to get along very well. But now Laban is hearing what's going on with the livestock, and he's not happy. He's not pleased with Jacob. Verse 3, And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers, and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. So God speaks up and he tells Jacob, it's time to get out of here. It's time to leave Laban and come into the land of your fathers where I will show you. Now remember, the land of his fathers is where Esau last said, I'll kill you. So Jacob here, he's, he's going to be torn a little bit, isn't he? Now he goes, I'll spoil it for you, but he does leave and he goes his way. But he's going to uh, trust that God's going to take care of him. And we'll deal with Esau tomorrow. We'll see Esau pop back up. Verse 4, look here. And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock, and said unto them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not toward me as before, but the God of my father hath been with me. And ye know that with all my power I have served your father. And your father hath deceived me, and changed my wages ten times. But God suffered him not to hurt me. If he said thus, the speckled shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckled. And if he said thus, the ring straked shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring straked. Thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father, and given them to me. And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived, that I lifted up mine eyes and saw in a dream... And behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring speckled, and grizzled. And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, 
Jacob, and I said, Here am I. And he said, Lift up now thine eyes, and see, all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring-straked, speckled and grizzled, for I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowedest a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out from this land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. So, here Jacob brings Rachel and Leah out to have this conversation with them about their father, his behavior towards them, and how all of this has come about. And so we're given a little bit more insight that God was in this than we had just yesterday. Yesterday, it just seemed like this crazy plot or plan to put sticks in watering troughs. But now we're told that God is involved, and he's the one who told him to go about it this way. And so Rachel and Leah are called, Bilhah and Zilpah not called. They're not, they're, they're his wives, but they're in a second tier, right? Because they're still servants of Leah and Rachel. So he explains everything to them, says, you know, I, I've served your dad. I've given it all, with, you know, all of my effort. Ten times he's changed my wages on me. And so God came to me and, and he told me about choosing the grizzled and the ring straked and the striped and the spotted livestock. And so, you know, when I decided to take that, then that's what the other animals bore. And so God is in this thing. And now look at how they respond. Verse 14. And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted of him strangers? For he hath sold us and hath quite devoured also our money. For all the riches which God hath taken from our father, that is ours and our children's now then, whatsoever God hath said unto thee, do. And so basically, Jacob's coming to his wife to discuss this life change. What a concept. A husband talking to his wife before he makes a significant life change. It's biblical, gentlemen. Make sure you seek the counsel and wisdom of your wives. God's given them to you to be a help me. Not only that, their lives are affected by your decisions. And so it's smart to get their take. And it's right to get their take. And so he comes to them and says, what do you guys, you know, God says, let's get back to my homeland. And they said, look, we got nothing going on for us here. Our father, you know, he's a bit reckless. Uh, he's taken advantage of us. Anything that we would have gotten an inheritance, it's long gone now. So yeah, if God told you to go, let's go. And so that's a lesson for the ladies, right? If your husband comes to you and says, you know what, the Lord is in this, and I believe this is what God would have us do, and then don't stand in the way of the Lord. Uh, let him be able to trust in your counsel, not knowing that you're going to be self-serving. And uh, given Leah and Rachel here and their father, we know what he's like. That could have been the case, although it also sounds like it here. Hey, there's nothing left for us monetarily at home. Let's get on out of here. Verse 17, so they're going to split. Then Jacob arose up and set his uh, sons and his wives upon camels, and he carried away all his cattle and all his goods which he had gotten, the cattle of his getting which he had gotten and paid in Aram, for to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. And Jacob stole away unawares to Laban the Syrian, in that he told him not that he fled. So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river and set his face toward the Mount Gilead. So this is the escape. They don't tell Laban they're leaving. It's like a midnight mover situation. You're going to pack up the house and move in the middle of the night before the landlord knows what's happened the next morning. And so he does. He pulls up the tents and uh, he pulls up the stakes and he gets all the animals and they are out of there. Something else is told us here in the middle of that, that little group of verses. Laban had some idols. And what these are, they're little trinkets of superstition. They were little graven images of people and things. And, and so instead of faith in God, he would have these little superstitious idols laying around. Well, Rachel steals some for whatever reason. Maybe she believed in them herself. Maybe she just wanted a keepsake from home. Maybe she's trying to uh, get back at her dad a little bit. I don't know the reasoning, but she takes these things and she leaves with them. And that's going to come up in a minute. 
And so they take off in the middle of the night and they do not tell Laban they're leaving. Verse 22, and it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled. So they've got a three day head start. And he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days journey. And they overtook him in the Mount Gilead. So <clears throat> Jacob here, he's got all these flocks and herds and he's got his family and he's got his kids. It's taken them a lot longer to make progress than it would just for Laban and some servants who are trying to catch up to him. So after seven days, they catch up to Jacob and Laban, and it's about to get really ugly between these two. <clears throat> Verse uh, 24, And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night, and said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. So God actually talks to Laban and says, you better not mess with my guy. So a good stern warning given here. Verse 25, then Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mount, and Laban with his brother pitched in the mount of Gilead. <clears throat> and Laban said to Jacob, what hast thou done, that thou hast stolen away unawares to me, and carried away my daughters as captives taken with the sword. Wherefore didst thou flee away secretly, and steal away from me? And didst not tell me that I have, might have sent thee away with mirth, and with songs, with tabret, and with harp? Thou hast not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters. Thou hast now done foolishly in so doing. It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. But the God of your father spake unto me yesterday, saying, Take thou heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. And now, though thou wouldest needs be gone, because thou sore longest after thy father's house, yet wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? And so I know I read through a good section here. Basically, Laban catches up to Jacob and he says, What do you think you're doing, leaving in the middle of the night like this? You didn't tell me you were going. You didn't let me say goodbye to my daughters. It's as though you kidnapped them and took them away from me. Uh, you've, you have not let me know that you're leaving. We would have thrown a party, a going away party. We would have sung songs to you and had mirth and, and would have rejoiced. And you could have gone on your way. Now, don't worry. I'm not going to hurt you because your God appeared to me last night and said, don't hurt him. But I'm telling you what, I'm upset that you've left without talking to me first and that you've stolen my gods. So now Jacob is going to answer here. Verse 31. And Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said, Peradventure thou wouldest take by force thy daughters from me. So he says, uh, The reason I left like I did is because I was afraid of you. I thought you'd keep Rachel and Leah. And I've worked 14 years for those women. And I've worked another six years for these cattle. I was afraid you'd take what belongs to me. Verse number 32. Now he deals with the stolen gods. So notice Laban goes on for five or six verses. Why'd you leave? Why'd you leave? Why'd you leave? And Jacob only answers with one verse. I was afraid of you, that you'd keep my wives. Now he's dealing with the stolen idols. Verse 32, With whomsoever thou findest thy gods, let him not live. Before our brethren discern thou what is thine with me, and take it to thee. For Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. So Jacob is so certain that nobody in his camp has these idols that he, he puts out there the, the greatest punishment possible. I'll tell you what, go ahead and search everything. And if you can find it, then you kill whoever's got it. And uh, so that's pretty bold proclamation, but the righteous are bold as a lion. When you have nothing to fear, nothing to worry about, you can, you can let it all hang out. What are you ashamed of? What are you worried about? And that's what Jacob does here. But he didn't know Rachel, his favorite wife, the one he longed for, he's been married to her for, uh, let's see, 20 years. No, 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 14 years here. 14? No, uh, 13 years. He's been married 13 years. 
and he's putting her life at risk, but he doesn't know it. So, verse number 33, And Laban went into Jacob's tent, and into Leah's tent, and into the two maidservants' tents, but he found them not. Then went he out of Leah's tent, and entered into Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the images, and put them in the camel's furniture, and sat upon them. And Laban searched all the tent, but he found them not. So you can probably envision uh, the, the saddle, if you will, that's on the back of the camel. And the way that those were set up is you could lift a lid on the saddle and there were compartments inside for storing things, you know, sort of like a console in a car, only it's a camel console, right? And so uh, you open the lid and you put all that stuff in there. And so that's what she did with these idols. She's sitting on her camel on the saddle and those idols are underneath of her in the saddle. Verse 35. Let it, uh, and she said to her father, Let it not displease my Lord that I cannot rise up before thee, for the custom of women is upon me. And he searched, but found not the images. So I don't know if this is true or not. I'm going to guess probably not. Rachel says, Dad, don't get upset. I'm sorry. I can't get off this camel. The custom of women is upon me. We all know what that means. And uh, so she was able to get away with it, right? She knows that he's not going to ask her to get off under those circumstances and search the saddle of the camel. And so by the, you know, the, the uh, hair of her chinny chin chin, right? She gets away with it. I don't know where that came from. All right, verse 36. Now Jacob is going to fire back at Laban. And Jacob was wroth and chode with Laban. And Jacob answered and said to Laban, What is my trespass? What is my sin that thou hast so hotly pursued after me? What did I ever do to you to make you chase me down like this? Whereas thou hast searched all my stuff, what hast thou found of all thy household stuff? Set it here before my brethren and thy brethren that they may judge betwixt us both. He's saying, so you just ransacked our tents. You went through everything that we own. What'd you find that belonged to you? Jacob, very cocky here. But again, he's got nothing to hide, nothing to worry about. So he's running his mouth. This 20 years, verse 38, have I been with thee? Seven for uh, Rachel. I'm sorry, late Leah. Then another seven for Rachel. And then six more years for the livestock. Thy ewes and thy she goats have not cast their young, and the rams of thy flock have I not eaten. That which was torn of beasts I brought not unto thee. I bear the loss of it. Of my hand didst thou require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. So what Jacob's saying here is when I was a shepherd for you, I took every loss. There were some things that could be done. If you had a female uh, sheep that was, was barren, couldn't have uh, children, you could eat that sheep. Uh, if you had a, uh, a, a piece of livestock, a goat or a ram or a lamb, and it was attacked by wild beasts, you could present the carcass to the owner and you wouldn't be held responsible for that particular animal. And what Jacob's saying here is, I never ate a barren lamb, you. I have never uh, not taken the hit for a, you know, what he's saying is, I did right by you in every instance while I was working for you, and I took the hit every single time financially. Verse 40, thus I was. In the day the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from mine eyes. Thus have I been twenty years in thy house. I served thee fourteen years for thy two daughters, and six years for thy cattle, and thou hast changed my wages ten times. Now, what I perceive from that is not that he got ten raises. He uh, moved it around to Laban's own benefit ten times. Except the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had been with me, surely thou hadst sent me away now empty. 
God hath seen my affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked thee yesternight. Wow, Jacob throwing down with Laban. So he says, look, it's only because of my God's hand upon me that I'm even alive with my wives, with my children, and with my livestock that I worked so hard for because God rebuked you the other day and told you to leave me alone. That's pretty strong, isn't it? Verse 43, And Laban answered and said unto Jacob, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and these cattle are my cattle, and all that thou seest is mine. And what can I do this day unto these my daughters, or unto their children which they have borne? Now therefore come thou, let us make a covenant, I and thou, and let it be for a witness between me and thee. So Laban backs off. Now, I can't tell, verse 43 does sound a little bit back talk, right, a little mouthy. You know what, these are my daughters, and these kids, they're my grandkids. That's what he means when he says my children. And, uh, and all these cattle, you know, this all started with me. But I'm going to tell you what, let's make a covenant. So Laban backs right off. Verse number 45, And Jacob took a stone and set it up for a pillar. And Jacob said unto his brethren, Gather stones. And they took stones and made an heap. And they did eat there upon the heap. And Laban called it Jagar Seadutha. But Jacob called it Gelead. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between me and thee this day. Therefore was the name of it called Gelead. And Mizpah, for he said, The Lord watch between me and thee when we are absent one from another. If thou shalt afflict my daughters, or if thou shalt take other wives beside my daughters, no man is with us. See, God is witness betwixt me and thee. And Laban said to Jacob, Behold this heap, and behold this pillar, which I have cast betwixt me and thee. This heap be witness, and this pillar be witness, that I will not pass over this heap to thee, and that thou shalt not pass over this heap and this pillar unto me for harm. The God of Abraham, the God of Nahor, and the God of their father, judge betwixt us. And Jacob sware by the fear of his father Isaac. Then Jacob offered sacrifice upon the mount, and called his brethren to eat bread, and they did eat bread, and tarried all night in the mount. And early in the morning Laban rose up, and kissed his sons and his daughters, and blessed them. And Laban departed and returned unto his place. And so there you have it. That's chapter 31. After being hearing the argument, Jacob responds, gives his rebuttal. He's right. God blessed him and God's given him all these things. Laban would have done him wrong and done him dirty, but he doesn't do that. Laban cracks, says, you know what? You're right. Let's make this right between us. And so they set up a, a, an altar, if you will, a pillar that's going to be symbolic of this peace treaty between these two guys and their families. Excuse me, and he says, we're not going to cross over this heap to do each other harm. And notice here, this is interesting, verse 53, the God of Abraham, who is the Lord, and the God of Nahor. You know, that's Nah Abraham's brother, and uh, they have a different gods, don't they? And so this shows here that Laban and his God and his worship was not the same. And this is another reason for Jacob to get out of there and get his families out of there. You know, God is a God of separation. We've said that all throughout this book. And God's people ought to be separate from the world and from non-believers or from pagan believers as well. All right, that was a long one, wasn't it? But uh, quite the story there. Uh, somebody commented yesterday, this is like a, a biblical soap opera. And absolutely, it is. And so there you have it. The, uh, the parting of ways of Jacob and, uh, what's his name, Laban. And tomorrow, Jacob's got to face Esau. So, man, the emotional wreck that Jacob's got to be at this point is, is an understatement. So let's hope that things get better for Jacob. And they do in time, don't they? Although at the end of his life, he whines about it. So, all right, that's all I've got for you this morning. Tomorrow, be here, 10 o'clock a.m. Hey, tonight at Lighthouse, we're, having our, we're finishing the book of Revelation. 
Chapter number 22, we're at the tail end of it. We started this back in March. So what's that? April, May, June, July, uh, August. So five months it's taken us to get through the book of Revelation. It's been a good study, and uh, we post them if you can't make it. We do. We actually live stream it as well, 7 o'clock tonight. Join us for that, would you? God bless you. Have a great day.